Hi guys, welcome to Mali Talks. In today's video, I'm going to take you on an adventure of the top three places that I think you should visit the next time that you're in Swaziland. If you've just found the channel, you just learned one of the best channels on YouTube right now. So please do join our community by hitting that subscribe button below. And if you've been with us since day one, thank you so very much for coming back. I have seen the messages and the emails of you guys saying you missed this content, which is why I'm glad to be back today. As mentioned in the intro, today's video is actually a vlog of the three places that I actually visited recently when I was back at home in Eswatini. These places are places that I've either once heard of or I've actually once been but very long time ago and I just thought to myself, let me go back there to see what changes have they made, why it actually makes sense for you to visit them and why I actually think they could make the top three of places to definitely go and check out even if you stay in Swaziland and you want something to do on a Saturday. So this episode is going to be a mix of me reviewing the places as well as me sharing the actual vlog of the content that we took on that day. I visited three different places and quite honestly they were actually scattered places but I enjoyed the fact that because of the proximity that they were in, well Swaziland is a small country, because of the proximity that they were in it was really easy for us to literally move from the one place to the next place to the next place and then also what you're going to notice in the vlog is the fact that in one of the places I think because they were doing renovations there wasn't really much that we could do or get out of the content however I do still think it's a place that is worth going which is why I've decided to include it in this video. The first place we went to is a place that is called Nguenya Class. It's basically like a complex village where they actually do a lot of class recycling. Um, I think I've actually been there in one of my primary school trips because it's a place that's been in existence for the longest time. However, I did appreciate that on going back there, I realized that they did make a couple of changes to the place. They made it look more nice, more touristy. And in fact, even the products that they have going on there in terms of the recycling have improved so much. You know, it's no longer just a glass or a vase or whatever, but they've also infused different colors, different shapes, different animals, you know, in the process of what they they do when they recycle the class. So when we got to Mwenya class, the first thing that we did was to have breakfast with the girls because of course, you know, we wanted to check out the place. And then afterwards, we actually went down to where they actually have their shop and where they show you where the class is actually manufactured, which I thought was actually a lot more fun. And quite honestly, it's such a simple looking process because the space is quite small. But when you look at all the products and the gorgeous ornaments that they're able to make out of the class, you just cannot believe that that's the place where they are made. And it's also something that I actually enjoyed to see because I thought to myself, they didn't necessarily have to have like a big factory for them to be able to recycle the class. Yet it's something that they've been doing for years. And of course, because it works with the environment. Not only do they have the glass recycling factory there, but they also have a couple of other shops which belong to the locals there. I saw a chocolate shop, I saw a shop that sells crafts, I saw a shop that sells African made garments, you know, and I thought to myself that's quite a nice variety in the sense that you could go there for lunch or even breakfast like we did and still be able to spend more than just one hour or two hours there going into the different shops and establishments that are there and hopefully get yourself a souvenir. So without further ado, this is what we got from the people from Gwenya class as one of the ladies was kind enough to be able to take us through the process of what they actually do there. Hi guys. So our first stop is Nguenya class. Um, funny enough, I've never been here. I probably, the last time I was here <laughs> was probably on a primary school trip type of setup. Um, so today I decided, you know what, that's going to be one of my Vagasha Eswatini stops. Um, yeah, as earlier mentioned, I am going to attempt to do a vlog on a few spots that I think if you happen to travel to Swaziland, I would definitely advise you to come and see. Um, and Gwenya class is definitely one of them, so let's go inside. glass blowing which is basically they recycle the glass and turn it into amazing glasses and glass ornaments etc etc so now we're going to go down and see exactly what they do and hear from them specifically what it is that they do 
I'd like to apologize guys one thing I forgot to say at the beginning of the vlog is the fact that I forgot my hand um, vlogging thing in South Africa so I'm just basically going to use my hand as more or less a selfie stick so you guys will just have to bear with me because like you know girl gotta do what a girl gotta do so yeah <laughs> found an amazing nice lady by the name of Ndombi who's going to explain to us exactly what they do here at Mgwenya class. This is called Mgwenya class. This was established in 1987. Mm -hmm. So what we do here, we recycle glasses like from Coca-Cola, Savannah, oh. and then we make like, Savannah. Uh, yes, Savannah <laughs> and Coca-Cola, Mariners, Buckley's. Oh, okay. Then, ah. Yes. Then we have a finance where we put the old boxes. Mm. Yes, and then they become molten glass. Oh, okay. When there's a molten glass, then the hand mold, most of them, it's animals. They're hand molded? Yes. Like, like all these shapes here? Yes. Like someone's yes, with their hand, they are, uh, it's yes. not putting it far somewhere, but it's like shape. No, like oh, wow. the elephants, mm. the animals, mm. the handmade. Wow. Yes, only the glasses that they do with the molds. Yes, yes. yes. Okay, mm -hmm. so does it matter the color of the glass that you guys get, or you guys determine no, what color is going to turn out? Clear bookies. Mm. Then the color we put is ourselves. Like if you oh. want to make like this, thing. then we have to put our own color. Oh. Yes, because the the one um, the molten glass is only clear. We only mm. put clear bookies. So even like stuff like what's behind you, because I'm seeing this blue bird, it's, uh -huh. it's the color that you guys did for yourself? Yes. Oh, okay. All we right. just put the color, and then we put the glass while it's still hot. It's a molten glass. Mm. Yes. And then when it's cooled down, then you can see the color. Okay. Yes. So were you guys open during lockdown? How was that for you guys? <laughs> yeah, we went too close, mm. but last year we did open like on June. Oh, okay. Starting from June. Yeah. But you don't work like full time, it will rotate. Ah, okay. Yes. So that like you can week, do you social come. distancing. Yes. Oh, okay. All right. All right. But okay. It's bad for us. <laughs> Obviously, it's been yeah. bad for all businesses. Okay. Yes. Thank you so much, oh, Dombi, for the brief. Okay. Um, it's a very beautiful place. I think you guys can see. There's literally so many things that you can come here and buy. I am just, I'm, I'm, I'm in. I'm in awe, like I'm just like, I can't believe <laughs> there's a place that is this pretty. And of course, me being me, I'm now trying to spot wine glasses that I will be buying and taking back to Johannesburg. Oh, and apparently they sell this wine here, this gin, yeah, wine, gosh. They sell this gin here called Imbali. Guys, the gin is named after me, thanks. Anyway, so it's called Imbali Gin. You can also find it here at Nguenya Class for those who would like to have something that is authentically made and brewed in Swaziland in the form of a gin. Now we are going into what is where they actually make the glass just to see what they are up to. So I won't be sounding much because there's a lot of noise here. So just carry on tight. with Mwenya class and like I said I would definitely recommend you to go and visit Mwenya class if you've never been also the fact that of course they have wine classes I'm a wine girl <laughs> I was actually able to get myself four classes which were great for a souvenir however just be warned their prices are slightly a bit different than what you're going to find in the shop but because their work is in line with keeping the environment clean and recycling and it's a sustainable process I do think that it's actually worth it if you're somebody who's looking to buy a gift for someone or even just to get something unique in your house like I did with my one classes. It's definitely a place that I would recommend for you to try out the next time that you're in a Swatini. 
The second place we went to is actually a place that I've once tried to go to about two years ago. I think it was 2019. But because of the road at the time, my private car was just like, this is not happening. <laughs> the place is called Sibebe Resort. Sibebe Resort is basically my goodness a combination of so many different things it's a resort there's a cultural village there's swimming pools that you can actually go and see it's like an infinity pool that's what they call it and you can actually just go there to go to the restaurant you know and even though the road there is longish than what i had expected but i do appreciate the fact that it's now tarred which means you know you can take your private car there just be aware that you're going to be going up the mountain so it can get a bit tricky but i definitely would recommend the road and like i said i did try to go there once but because at the time it was gravel road my car was just like this is not happening and which is why i was pleasantly surprised to discover that now you can literally get there with any car because they tried as much as possible of course given the conditions of the road to put tar on it that leads all the way to the resort unfortunately for us on the day that we went to Sibibi resort first of all it was cold <laughs> so that kind of erased any thought process of us sitting outside or you know sightseeing or even being able to use the infinity pool and then secondly what we discovered was they are under a bit of reconstruction or renovations here and there especially when it comes to the pool so when we got there they were actually cleaning it and all we could do was literally stand outside as you're going to see in the snippet of the vlog was just stand there and admire it and take a couple of pictures and nothing more but it's definitely a place that i think if you're someone who's into wildlife you're into outdoor camping it's definitely a place that i'd recommend because even though there's no actual camping they do have chalets that are shaped like the places that you'd normally find when you want to do camping which is basically glamorous camping in addition on the resort itself after you've gone through the entrance gate they actually have a place called the cultural village which is basically a place where you can go if you have never seen or you want to see people dancing in the Siswati way. So what happens at the cultural village is there's a time slot and then you pay like, I think you pay 50 bucks on entry into the resort and then 20 rand is for the restaurant area and the facilities and then the 30 rand allows you to go all the way to the cultural village for you to be able to see dances and performances and experience a real Eswatini culture of how the people live and how they dress and they also said that on certain days they do have food offerings which means you'd be able to taste some of the cultural food which is originally made in Eswatini if that's something you'd like to try as i said before unfortunately for us on the day that we went it was cold so to be quite honest you know the higher you go the colder it becomes because of course the baby resort is on top of a mountain you know we couldn't really do a lot of the activities that we thought we were going to be able to do when we got there and of course the renovations meant we were limited on the types of activities that we were meant to do but with that said it's still a place that i would recommend for you to try out on a nice sunny day where you want to take your family out for breakfast or for lunch and even for supper and i think it's a great place also for outdoor events if maybe you want to host a birthday party or you want to do a baby shower i think it's a matter of talking to them and they would allow you to do an event like that but it's an absolutely beautiful place oh and also they have a zip line there which is separate from the 50 ml that you need to pay and i think that's such a cool idea because it basically means they have so many things on the compound that you can actually do and that you can literally turn the whole thing into a weekend getaway for you and your mans or your lady if it's something that you're into i just thought it was a place that had a lot of things to offer even though that on the day we're not able to explore it but it's definitely a place that i'd put in my top two as i did in this video hi guys so our next stop is a place called Sibibi Resort. It's actually a very nice place. I think it's just that today is the wrong day in terms of temperature. So I would not necessarily advise you to come here on a cold day, especially if you want to be able to enjoy that sort of infinity pool they have going on at the back right there. It's actually very, very nice. Um, it's a very nice place. They have places for accommodation. They also actually have a cultural village. If you want to see people dancing, dressed in traditional regalia, that's something that you can do to come into the resort is 30 emalangeni and then to go into the what's that thing cultural. the cultural village oh my gosh i just had a blonde moment <laughs> to go into the cultural village is 50 emalangeni so just come here budgeting roughly 80 rand for entrances only and then they also do have a zip line which unfortunately i couldn't get the price for it when i was doing this video um, they also do have a zip line, but you can always find them on Facebook just to inquire if you have any questions. And also there's a restaurant and a bar. And again, like I said, there's accommodation. They accommodate behind me. 
right over there those rendezvous that you see that's basically the accommodation that they have going on here it's basically chalets um i haven't seen inside but just basing it on the building and the fact that it actually looks like it's got satellites and everything i'm assuming it's typically what a hotel room would look like but of course it's not a hotel room and then the scenery is amazing you get to see all these mountains that people always talk about this is basically Sibebe rock for those who don't know which is why the place is called Sibebe resort and yeah like i said it has this infinity pool which is actually quite dope i think during the day it looks really nice it's just that today is not that day for that because i mean it's overcast so but yeah that's another place you can try out when you come to swaziland <laughs> visited with the girls on that Saturday when we we're doing our vlog is a place that was pleasantly surprising it's a new place it's a place I'd never been to before and I just liked the fact that even though it seems like it's a bit out of town it's actually such a cool place guys it's definitely worth checking out it was definitely my favorite of out of the three places that we went this place is called Mdolomba I don't know whether it's called Mdolomba Resort or whether it's just Mdolomba no in fact I remember it's Mdolomba Eden Garden Eden, something like that. But I just thought to myself, this is a pleasantly surprising place. Of course, as you're going to see in the vlog, Kylie said that the building looks like a church. <laughs> she was like, it's traumatizing for her because she grew up a church girl. But anyway, this is not about her. But the service, the food, the views, everything there just screamed, you know, luxury and outdoor and new you know and on top of that i really cannot overemphasize the service that we got guys their service was impeccable you know when you go to places that have a shisanyama kind of vibe where there's outdoor and benches etc you're just expecting them to grab your order give you your meat give you your drinks and then disappear not at Mdolomba, guys the chef came to say hi the waitresses kept coming back to find out if we were doing okay if we needed anything and on top of that their food was a lot for the price that we actually paid there um i think we ordered something called umkoem it's like a platter for two type of thing where there's three different or four different types of meat and salad as well as a starch and there were three of us and we still went away with the takeaway there was just so much food for the price that we actually paid which i really did appreciate because sometimes you feel like you want to go to the places you get to the menu and it's exorbitant prices like it's ridiculous just because they know that they are now out of town or you are now out of town so it'll take a lot for you to go all the way back to get a proper restaurant i really did enjoy mtolomba guys but let me not keep you let's get into the part of the vlog that actually explores mtolomba in more detail hi guys so this is our third stop for the day a place called mdolomba eden it has this weird small sign here and i feel like they should have had this sign at the beginning of the road because where you're supposed to turn to come here you're not even sure if that's where you're supposed to turn but anyway here we are it's a bit of a dirt road for like maybe two kilometers um, but it's not bad it's doable so if you have a car that is as low as mine you don't have to worry because again like i said it's doable this is the official gate it's opening so i'm sensing that they have seen that there's people coming <laughs> There's no way we've not stopped where Kylie Slipper is like, oh my gosh, what's wrong here? It sucks. So I'm telling her, I'm like, this is an adventure. On an adventure, you do not have moments where you feel like the thing sucks because everything is an experience. Kylie Slipper, please tell us, what is your opinion? I'm good, guys. Okay, maybe, I said, let, maybe let's check the sun out. Maybe it's a one. Also because Kylie is just generally a BITCH type of person like also, oh my god well. <laughs> but seriously <laughs> you thought that Patlana looks like a church building or something 
Pela mi nengi ne church trauma. Yeah, one. You have church trauma. So we can ask me better than Jerry. Please come and lead us. Oh, in in song. Nothing but stuck. Kaini says used to be a worship church leader. worship leader. Yes, thank you very much. But I'm so, I'm available if you want to hire me. I'm really good. <laughs> like I can only do three Sundays a month, ten thousand per month. Oh, okay. One day, two All hours right. practice. Thanks. Bye. Bye. <laughs> so guys, this is basically Mtolomba. The place actually has a very nice view. Um, if you're a person who likes like nature and a tranquil place, I think I like the fact that they actually do play music in the background as I can hear. It just kind of gives the place a vibe because otherwise you'd just be out in the wild and it would just suddenly be boring because it's so quiet. But they do have music playing in the background so that's quite amazing. And yeah, this is basically the place. I think I like the structure of it. It just, it does look nice. It really does. So now we're about to... Yeah. to the end of our vlog adventures of the places that I think you should definitely visit the next time you are in Swaziland and or if you already stay in Swaziland and you're looking for activities to do on a Saturday and as you saw in the vlog these are places that we actually visited in one day which basically means if you wanted to move from one place to the next you could possibly do it like say for example like we did have breakfast and when your class then have lunch at Mtolomba I would not necessarily advise you to do Sweber Resort in just a day where you've also included other activities because like I said I feel like it's a place that has a lot of activities that you can actually do in a single day and or if you decide to stay there for a weekend you wouldn't feel like you need to come down the mountain to go into town for you to be able to experience certain things it just gave me a weekend away type of vibe where you would also be able to experience a different culture in the sense of the cultural village at the same time there's the infinity pool which you can try out at the same time there's the zip line it's definitely a place that if you had a weekend to spare I would advise you to take your person so that you guys can go and rebound and rejuvenate there by Baby Resort. With that said, this brings us to the end of today's vlog. I hope you guys really enjoyed all the tidbits and tips that you saw on this vlog and all the crazy things that Kylie had to say as Lungsta was just in the background laughing like she always does. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this trip as much as we did. And if you've made it to the end of the vlog, please do remember to hit that subscribe button. And also guys, please do hit the like button because it helps for my YouTube algorithm. And also, I look forward to seeing you in the next video. So please do keep those notifications on. Other than that, thank you so much for tuning in. Cheers.